Congress and I've been a student at the Academy for four years now. I like to start by asking a few questions that I've dealt with my whole life. Have you ever been to the doctor's office and been asked for your medical history? Have you ever wondered about your heritage or where you came from? These are things that I would know have the answer to. For my senior project, I wanted to locate my biological grandmother. My dad was adopted, and as much as I wanted to find her for myself, as selfish as that may be, I really wanted to find her for my dad. He has more questions about her than I ever could. I was hoping that she would still be alive, but there's really no way to tell unless we found her. There is also the difficulty of if we found her, how would we make contact? How would she respond? Would she even respond? These are some of the questions that came up during the process. For my research paper, I researched the emotional effects of adoption on the developmental life cycle. What I researched in regards to my paper and what went through this entire process overlapped in some areas. After working with SearchQuest America, two very nice women helped me find my biological grandmother. Next. In the beginning of the year, we had a meeting with various connectors from the community who have strengths in different areas. At the time, I had no idea, but I was talking to the very man who handled my dad's adoption about their project. He didn't remember my dad's name at the time, but Marlon Smith was the lawyer who I was looking for. Later, with my dad's adoptive parents' permission, he opened the file and gave me the information that I needed. I searched countless hours, Googling her name and location on my dad's birthday. I searched obituaries, wedding registries, as well as citizen registries. After not gaining any insight on my own, I knew I needed help from an outside source. I was fortunate enough to have two very generous donors come forward and help fund my search. I used an agency that specializes in finding lost relatives. After talking with the agency, they told me that in my case, I would never have been able to find her on my own. I simply did not have the knowledge or resources to do so. I talked back and forth with Susan Brill Williams. Ms. Williams asked me for all the possible documents I obtained from my dad's adoption file. She is a licensed investigator in Florida and has been working in the research field for over 25 years. She is a reunited adoptee, well-versed in reunion issues, with over 5,000 successful solves. Susan is a former member of Troy's Angel Team on the Locator TV show, <laughs> if you are familiar with that. Not spelled J-A-C-Q-U-E-L-I-N-E, -E, like on my dad's birth certificate, but J-A-C-L-Y-N. Next. Dearest Jacqueline, my name is Kyle Rogers and I'm a senior at the Academy of the New Church. At my school, you can choose to take a course called Senior Project. It is a special class that is only offered to seniors. For my project, I decided to attempt something that has been on my mind for many years now. For my project, I chose to find you. I am your biological granddaughter. I tried to find you on my own with the information listed in the adoption files, but I did not have the knowledge or resources to do so. I used a search agency that specializes in finding relatives. Successfully, they located you and gifted me with the information. That's how I came to find you today. I am 18 years old and I live in Bernathan, Pennsylvania. I love to play sports. I love them so much that I've received a scholarship to play field hockey at a great college up in Boston. I have two siblings, one older and one younger, with two loving parents. I have had an amazing childhood. We all love your son very dearly and are blessed by his presence every day. I want to thank you so much. <clears throat> I want to thank you for giving me such a great dad and husband for my mom. Next. <clears throat> I found out later that day that she was from Missouri. She has lived there her whole life and she was married with three daughters. I have seven cousins that I never knew about until now. She was a teacher just like my dad. <laughs> I'd like to read aloud the letter that she wrote to one of the doctors who took care of her at the hospital where my dad was born.
August 68. Dear Doctor, as I take the time to send you this bill, send this bill to you, I'd like to take one minute more to thank you, if it's possible, for all of your help and understanding in the last few months. I could go on forever trying to express my gratitude to you, but perhaps the best words still remain, thank you, from the bottom of my heart. It is reassuring to know that there are still people like you to turn to when times are difficult. Also, please thank Jane and Dr. Smith for me. Without you, I don't think I would have the attitude that I have today about my future. You've helped me imagine that I can eventually live as a wife who is very anxious to become a mother. Have a very Merry Christmas and may the new year bring you many blessings. With much gratitude, Jackie. I don't know much about my grandma, but this letter seems sincere and thankful. After receiving my grandmother's information, it had her phone number as well as her email and Facebook account. I learned that she was big into blogging and documenting her family history. We sent her a Facebook message and then a letter in the mail. Writing a letter to someone that I've never met was a very long process. I didn't know what to say because I've been trying to compile 18 years of my life in a one-page letter. I felt like I wanted to say everything in my power to write something to evoke a response from her. I wanted to try and make my family seem like something that she'd want to be a part of. The truth is that it's impossible to get to know someone through a short letter. Next. For my service piece, I wanted to raise money for Nathan and Bennett Falco, who are connected to the adoption world. They have an adopted older sister whose name is Libby. Nathan and Bennett are diagnosed with mandibulolateral dysplasia type B, which is a rare form of progeria. For those of you who may not know, progeria is a rare disease which causes children to age rapidly. They suffer from weak frames, baldness, club knuckles, and shortened life expectancy. They have the two only known cases in the United States, as well as being number six and seven diagnosed worldwide of their specific premature aging <laughs> disorder. I wanted to raise money for their family's foundation called Fighting for Their Future. With the help of Rob Forrester, I was able to create the GoFundMe page and make bracelets to help raise money for the foundation. I want to thank Kyle Genslinger and Dylan Ogner for giving my project some extra time and attention that it needed. I want to thank Ivan Osborne for being my mentor even through my injury, as well as my dad and brother for running the Broad Street Run in the place of my injury. I want to thank Rob Forster again for all of his help with fundraising. I would not have been able to done all of that work by myself. I want to thank Doug Reuter for letting me interview him for a large portion of my research paper. And I want to thank my family, especially my dad, for making all this possible. He is truly one of the strongest people that I know and love. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you unmute number two. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you. Okay, so who has questions for Kyra? She may choose not to answer certain questions. That's not as an insult, I'm sure. sensitive issues, what was it like with classmates that you know, care about you and are wondering uh, what you're going through and just speak to a little bit of that. I think it's really hard for people who don't necessarily have a direct connection to someone who was a 
adopted or that part of them isn't really known. I think it's just not really something. There's obviously empathy, but you can't exactly know what it's like for yourself unless you have that. But it was definitely very nice that my classmates were concerned about me, but it was hard because I wanted to keep it more to myself. It was more of a family thing for a very long time. What? Uh, oh. <laughs> All right, so what, if you were to run the Broad Street Run, would your time have been the same or less? <laughs> <laughs> um, the question was that I ran it faster than my dad and my brother, and I hope so. <laughs> How would you characterize the um, process of this for your whole family? It's a big question. Yeah. The question was how would I characterize this process for my whole family, me and my family? Um, it's been pretty hard. I don't want to make it sound easy. It was a lot of things that you think about and then now they're becoming real. So all of the like the name and everything, it all came out of face to the name and I learned that 